you know. So as far as units, it works out. What, as far as making sense, let's see if it works out. OK, so it should make some kind of uh, sense. This one is telling you the more mass you have, the more time it should take for the motion to take place. So if I hang a lot of mass here, okay, and I pull it and let go, it's telling me that the more mass I have hanging there, the more time it should take to go back and forth, you know, one, one revolution. Does that make sense? As far as logical sense. The heavier it is, it should take a long time to go up and down, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it seems to make sense, right? Same thing with the horizontally. You know, if you let go of it, it goes back and forth. So that way it makes sense. And then it's telling you that the weaker the spring constant is, the lower the spring constant, the longer the time should be also. So if the spring is a weak spring, you let go of it, it, again, it takes a long time to go back and forth. So low K means weak spring. So weak spring and heavy mass together, combination gives you a long period. The opposite, if you have a low mass and a strong spring, it should go back and forth really strong. So the time, the period should be small. So it does make sense, right, as far as uh, logically what we expect. The formula for the simple pendulum is omega is square root of uh, g over L. The f is 1 over 2 pi square root of g over L. Remember, they're all connected. And then the period is 2 pi square root of L over g. So the period is the inverse of the frequency. Again, we can check to see if it has the right units. OK. Uh, this one, uh, L is the meters. Uh, G is meter per second squared. And then square root of that. Square root of meter per meter per second squared. And then a meter and a meter cancel. Square root of second squared equals square root of seconds. So it has seconds, OK? So write units. So unit-wise, it works out. Now, what does the L and the G mean? Let's see here. Now remember when the simple pendulum works. This formula works best when you have, like, a, let's say, a string that is negligible mass. And you have a, an object here whose size can be ignored compared to the size of the whole string, OK? And the L means the distance between the pivot point and the center of the object. So that's the L. G is the gravitational field, the Earth's gravitational field. Um, and usually, the formula also works best when the angle is small. You don't want to displace the string too high and go too high. The formula doesn't work well then. So the theta usually should be less or the same as about 15 degrees for the formula to work well. OK? Uh, because in the proof of the formula, you will see that uh, we use the fact that the uh, sine of the theta is equal to theta for a small angle. So we use the small angle approximation. OK? OK, let me. So the physical pendulum, as I said, is an actual something that it's rotating, like a, the bat, which I'm going to show, uh, will do. Something that's rotating. And the formula for this is 2 pi square root of the moment of inertia about the pivot point divided by mgd. So in other words, if you have something like this, and it's rotating about that point, you want to take the moment of inertia of the ruler about that point. And then you want to do MGD is the, the distance between this point and the center of mass of the object. 
So this is the distance D. Okay? The, the distance between where the center of mass is and the pivot point. The reason why that comes out is because that's, that's what determines the torque. Mg times the distance D is the torque. The farther away the pivot point is from the center of mass, the less, uh, the more the torque is, you see? Remember, this is the one that we twist the spring, okay? And then we let go of it, and it goes back and forth. This one, the formula is 2 pi, t equals 2 pi, square root of moment of inertia of the object about the axis of rotation. So moment of inertia about the axis of rotation divided by the kappa. Kappa is known as the torsional constant of the string. Torsional constant of string. In other words, it's kind of like the equivalent of the spring constant of a spring. It tells you how strong the, spring, the, the string is. Does it force the object to come back to its original uh, position? So the bigger, the, the stronger the spring, I'm mean, sorry, the, the, the stronger the string the faster it's going to make it to come back. So the, the bigger this is, the, the lower the period should be. Let's see, what are the units of this one? The units of the torsional constant should be, uh, I believe it is uh, um, Newton meter. The, the units of the torsional constant is Newton meter. Let's see if the units will work out. The units of moment of inertia is kilogram meter squared. The divide that by Newton meter. And then uh, meters will cancel one of the meter, right? You have kilogram meter divided by, and then the Newton is kilogram meter per second squared. And then the kilogram meter, kilogram meter cancel, you have sec square root of second squared, which is second. So the units of kappa should be Newton meter, or in the British system it would be pound feet. So it will tell you something about the strength of this string, how fast it will go back and forth. Okay.